Hi, this is Anthe here. Um, I'd like to, well, I don't really feel like it actually, but I'm going to try I talk about a difficult topic for me. I've just been um, carving up a piece of used soap and there's bits of toothpaste in there as well. Soap and toothpaste making a temporary process art. Um, which will be destroyed and it's all part of the process. I'm doing it for a mental health um, group I'm in. Someone came up with the idea of doing art from anything and picking themes that were voted on and there's no prize or anything, it's just people sharing what they get up to. Instead of doing anything like this, which a lot of people enjoy, I'm doing something with just ordinary objects that still do the processing and that still have um, pretty much, you know, the same thing. Um, but showing it's just something that anyone can do, you know. Um, And the theme was regret. And I sort of thought, oh, what am I going to do for that? And then I saw a red soap lying there that's been there for a while. And I decided to have a go at carving it. Really rough, really messy. I'm not the world's best soap, soap carver. But I chopped out a heart um, it's the day after Valentine's Day here. I'd say my longest and most enduring love has actually been creativity in lots of different forms. Um, I carved a heart and then I carved words into it. One side I put friend. And the other side I put bitch. And then I cut it in half. Um, I know what it means because I was listening to the song Bitch, um, Meredith Brooks, I think her name is, when I was doing it. There's lots of things too long to tell you and to be honest, feel a bit embarrassed about. But my regrets have been losing, losing friends and at times I have acted like a bitch basically because I know that when I, have, when I have behaved in those kind of ways I have been unwell with bipolar disorder but I've also been called bitch and it's kind of a trigger because then that word is linked to lots of things. So I think the first time I was called a bitch was by a friend when I was about 11 years old on a game, off a game friendship with a girl that yeah I think she was very troubled as well and don't want to diagnose her but I 
friendship was confusing because she she liked to do things that I found really hurtful like kicking her dog and laughing at it and oh, I, I don't know I'm getting myself triggered a little bit now She did some things to her baby brother as well, which I can't forget. And then somewhere along the way, I think I started getting symptoms of bipolar breaking through and puberty, so at times though with her I'd feel euphoric and she would also be euphoric at the same time and then we'd go, go around being a couple of idiots you know <laughs> and um, one of the biggest things that I regret when we were about 11 years old is she was actually bullying a girl and She got me to do something like stick a note on the girl's back, like kick me, and then run away. Which I think is horrible, no. But at the time, with that bad influence, I did it. And my friend also called me a bitch because... I asked if her boyfriend could also be my boyfriend, <laughs> um, so we had two good friends. <laughs> so she called me a little bitch, and then I, I didn't know back then that most people had one boyfriend or one girlfriend at a time kind of thing. <laughs> Even though I was brought up very religious, it was sort of, I don't know, people in the Bible had lots of wives, so... <laughs> No. Um, so then the girl that um, was bullied by her and I feel really bad that at times I was sort of like an accomplice in it because I was with her um, and she got me to do that sticking the note on her back time that time um, when we got to high school she was with her friends and I was walking by myself and she goes she's a bitch and it felt so horrible but I thought I deserve it, I deserve it, yeah I'm a bitch <laughs> and then um, yeah just being um, it's like it's like my behaviour could be like polar opposites with the bipolar like um, do things that I wouldn't normally do and I didn't like it when people called me a bitch for sex or um, when I was a bit feisty with, with a manic someone close to me called me a bitch and I also, I did a year of high school teaching, believe it or not. Um, I had to act, it was just exhausting because I had to act outgoing, act confident. And one of the first classes I, I didn't let them go until I was ready. And the girl goes, she's a bitch. And I thought at that time, yes, because I'm faking it, you know. And so what I did was act tougher at first and then eased up on them kind of thing. <laughs> This was uh, ages ago. So, what I'm going to do with this, what happened with the friend, the, the troubled friend, 
Okay, now that's what they've done. Twelve. Um, she gave me a friendship soap. I think that's why I wanted to use the soap. Is when she was being a cool friend, she was a cool friend, but then she did these other things like kick the dog and laugh and I was like, what did you do that for? You know, it was really hurtful to me and in other um, behaviours acting out. Um, she gave me a friendship soap and then after the bitch incident when I stole her boyfriend <laughs> kind of thing, my first ever boyfriend that I never ended up touching. Um, I, she dumped me as her friend and I cried and used the soap in the bath and then she wanted to be my friend again and she said did you use the soap and I said yes so um, this is not going to get wasted what I'll do with it is I'll rinse the toothpaste off sensitive toothpaste it is and chop it up into lots of little pieces and I'll just use it in the bath. So it's kind of like processing, listening to the music while I do it. And I think um, pretty much everyone with bipolar disorder, if you have it, have had it quite severely, like myself, do things that you cringe at afterwards or feel quite embarrassed about. Some things I only tell my therapist because I feel too embarrassed to tell anyone else. Um, There's no criteria that you have to forgive people, but I think um, there's a process in learning to forgive yourself. I saw a video today with a man with borderline personality disorder, and he said it's like there's an arsehole that lives in his head, always telling him and he's always fighting with it. And he was an addict and he said he's been an arsehole for years so that's why he keeps hating himself and um, yeah, there is some overlap with borderline personality disorder and, and bipolar disorder. And um, I haven't forgiven those who have used me, sexual abuse and assault, but I have been letting go of the hurt and the anger by processing it. It's not a matter of just burying it and it's gone. That doesn't work. So yeah, that's why I've been sharing with you some of the ways I do and, and it is music is, is one of the main ways. Um, I also shared with, um, a video that is a compilation three three years ago going into a mania episode, my first attempt at vlogging and I just put snippets of different videos over a period of a month or two showing the elevation into full mania. Um, so even though, yeah, it's very vulnerable putting that up, I put it so And you can see what it can look like. I didn't um, get on film the terror and the paranoia and the, um, everything just before I crashed and sedated so I've got there's a gap but I think you get the idea that it's actually quite different to um, how, I, how I otherwise am. I come like really confident and really feel like I'm the sexiest person alive and feel like I've got special powers like seeing the future and all this shit. It's really, yeah, it's really cringeworthy but I've put it up um, to just to try and help people to understand more. Um, and basically, yeah, in that state you're just high as a kite so 
why um, I am medicated now um, to try and keep the moods um, more towards the middle and also um, to help be more in control of um, my emotions and impulsive behaviours and things like that. Thanks.